Hello and welcome to Tycon Live at Tycon 2007. This is Praveen Shah and uh, we will be speaking with Kurt Carlson, the CEO of SRI International on Managing Innovation. Recent, you know, just a few moments back, uh, he gave the Tycon attendees an excellent speech on the process of uh, innovation. Welcome, uh, Kurt, and Wonderful thank you for here. joining us. Thank you. So my first question is managing innovation. How much of it is an art and how much is science? Well, there's certainly art to it, but I would say most of it is just uh, good common sense, basic principles applied with passion and conviction. There are things that uh, there's nothing magical about it. Um, there are things that you can be learned and done really, really well. Uh, the trick is you have to do it, like a lot of things in life. Um, and very few companies, we found just a handful that actually take it seriously and apply those what we call innovation best practices mm -hmm. with a kind of conviction that leads to great success. Great. And uh, your recent book on uh, the five disciplines of innovation is a uh, great how-to recipe for the process of right. managing innovation. Do you think it would apply equally well to large as well as small companies or would you tweak it a little bit for small companies? Um, well, we have applied the same basic principles to both the smallest companies, that is to startups here mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, as well as to some of the biggest, actually the biggest company um, in the world. And yes, the fundamental ideas um, apply to every organization um, because the process of innovation is really, again, um, very fundamental. Um, the difference, of course, is the scale of a large organization and getting the organizational structures aligned around um, innovation. Sure. So big companies are really good at incremental innovation. They have a harder time with um, transformative innovations. And, of course, here in Silicon Valley, every small company basically aspires to having one of those transformational innovations. So um, most of it's the same, but there's some really fundamental things around the, the organizational structures. And uh, is this a uh, boundary that you know both companies should stick to, or could large companies you know learn you know transformative innovation and uh, vice versa? Absolutely, large companies. Um, it's actually a tragedy when you think of the resources that large companies have. Uh, very few of them um, have been keeping up with the stock market. In fact, mm -hmm. um, only a couple over the last 50 years have beaten the market, which means essentially that all big companies, or essentially all big companies, are going away. And part of it is because um, in spite of their great assets, they have a hard time um, putting their assets to work to, to identify and then win at those big transformational opportunities. And, um, <clears throat> you know, as this conference proves, there is more opportunity probably today in every aspect of um, especially the technology business than any time in the last hundred years. So infotech is wide open, biotech is wide open, and nanotech is bi wide open. So... The opportunities are there, but you need to have the right skills to be able to see them and then take advantage of them. Sure. So uh, let's take the example of Apple and SRI. Mm -hmm. If uh, we were to ask people who invented the mouse, most of them would credit <laughs> Apple. A few of them would credit Xerox Park, right. but it was actually SRI that did the invention and right. licensed it. So the question is, as a business, especially as a small business, how do you choose when to out-license your IP and, uh, or how to commercialize it yourself? Yes, so uh, particularly back when we invented the computer mouse and Windows and hypertext and all the things that you basically take advantage of today on your personal computer, uh, the strategy of SRI was to primarily license the technology. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of the, we're the hidden partner behind a lot of these great innovations that have happened um, in the world, including... Every time you type in .com, that's SRI, and every time you uh, mail a letter, you're getting a piece of SRI, and when a computer talks to you, that's probably SRI too. Um, so what we do is today, what we decide is that um, if there's a company in the space where um, it's a leader and has the right you know, spirit to, to take advantage of the technology, we license it, because that's, mm -hmm. um, that's the safest, most reliable way to do it. But if we have a big new idea, a transformational idea, uh, then we incubate those companies now ourselves and we spin them out um, to create sure. value in the marketplace. So um, based on the market and, um, and how big the opportunity mm -hmm. is. So one final question. What innovation opportunity excites you the most today? What excites me the most today? Um, well, one of the things we're doing is in energy. And... Um, 
you know, energy was kind of a moribund field for a long time because it was so hard to break in. And today it's quite different. We just came up with a low cost uh, process for making bulk silicon, which can have a huge impact given what's happening in solar cells. Um, we just announced um, what we call a direct carbon fuel cell. It's a technology that can burn coal, which mm -hmm. we have plenty of, and China and India have plenty right. of, and India and China are going to burn that coal no matter what we do in the West. Um, it allows you to burn it with twice the efficiency today, okay. and it produces CO2 in a form where it's so easy to capture energy. and can be... Um, yeah, so I guess energy first. excites you the most. Thank you for joining us, Great. and uh, stay tuned for more interviews from Tycon Live at Tycon 2007. Thank you.